What's going on, folks? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien today. Uh, in honor of his show, we're going to read through some of the cards he has here. So this one says, you are never responsible for the actions of others, but you are responsible for you. If someone is not treating you with love and respect, it is a gift if they walk away from you. You may hurt for a while, but your heart will eventually heal. And we all got to know our worth, everyone. So today, as Dave was saying, low volume, we're kind of trading sideways at a lot of the indices. Um, the Q's down 0.79, uh, gold's down just a little bit, um, the dollar's up a bit. Um, one of the big things that I saw is Lyft just taking the absolute L today. Um, they had bad earnings yesterday. Um, massive, massive volume dumping down here. Uh, Lyft shares fell 24% during after hours trading after is issuing weak guidance in its earnings report on Thursday. It's interesting too because Uber kind of knocked it out of the park, but Uber's down a little bit as well. Obviously not down 35%, 36% almost. Um, so uh, some of the key numbers here has a loss per share of 74 cents. Uh, revenue was 1.18 versus 1.16 billion. Um, Lyft said it expects to make roughly 975 million in revenue in the fiscal first quarter of 2023, lower than the 1.09 billion analysts anticipated, according uh, to some analysts. So, yeah, bad bad time to be a Lyft investor. The the Uber downturn. Th this had a pretty big uh, run up on, you know, reports that they were going to beat earnings. A lot of the chat. Um, on a bunch of forums online was like, you got to get into this right now because they're about to beat it. And they did all right. Um, you can see here some high volume. This is, they're in a kind of a better situation, obviously, than Lyft. Uh, and other important news, the weighting for the CPI is going to be altered. So um, with readers today, uh, the U.S. monthly consumer prices uh, rose in December instead of falling as previously estimated. And uh, data for the prior two months was also revised, um, which some economists said raised the risk of higher inflation readings in the month ahead. So what's going on here with this? Um, basically, according to Bloomberg, um, they, they are shifting weight. So one of the things that they're reducing is going to be um, some of these deflationary pressures. Um, and that's mainly going to be um, used car sales, which the prices are going down. Remember, you know, last year, um, and I even remember like in March of 2022, when I was in the market, um, it didn't it didn't make any sense not to buy a new car. Uh, used car prices were so high. This has been uh, dropping and this is kind of dragging um, inflation a little bit. Um, so they're reducing that and they um, are increasing the component um, of owner's equivalent rent um, with a large weighting of 3.4 percent. Uh, and that's up from about three. Uh, 32.8%. Uh, so at the moment, the housing components are some of the largest drivers of inflation. Um, owners equivalent rent rose 0.8% uh, in December. So, you know, what does this say for the market? Obviously, with like higher CPI, um, excuse me, increasing CPI, um, this kind of suggests that we're going to have longer rates um, on the horizon, excuse me, um, greater rate increases for a longer period of time. Uh, that can be a little bit deflationary on prices in the market itself. Um, certainly in the short term, but I think what their idea is with this um, is it gets a, a better idea of the really heavy players, right? So yes, car prices are deflating um, and lowering inflation, um, but focusing on these main drivers um, of inflation is massive. And so it maybe gets a better idea of analysts um, on the Fed side to see, to see what's going on to get down um, something like equivalent uh, rent. Um, they do suggest that on the long term, however, um, we're going to see these kind of prices decrease, um, and that will that will lower inflation. And so maybe targeting something that's like the heaviest uh, kind of driver of inflation um, is super important. We'll see what, what goes on with that. But obviously, for the short term, you know, um, that's this is not great for the market. Um, and it also makes you think, you know, you had so many. You had so many moves in the past, you know, few months of last year, uh, depending on this good CPI. Um, and uh, it, it turns out actually that there was a, you know, minor increase, you know, albeit minor, but um, an increase nonetheless. Um, on the inflation note, 
China's factory, um, China's factories prices fall as manufacturing struggles to recover. This is from Reuters. Uh, producer price index falls uh, more than expected in January. Consumer price increases slightly below forecasts and monetary easing more likely than tightening. Um, China's January factory gate prices fell more than economists expected, suggesting that flashes of domestic demand that had stoked consumer prices after the zero COVID policy ended are not yet strong enough to rekindle upstream sectors. Uh, the PPI was down 0.8% on a year earlier, extending to 0.7% drop the prior month and faster than the 0.5% fall tipped in a Reuters poll, um, Reuters poll uh, even though manufacturing activity returned to growth in January. So th this is interesting a little bit. Um, a little later in the show, I'll, uh, you know, the Chinese are huge on, on this kind of fabrication. Um, a little bit later in the show, I'll touch a bit on Biden's um, speech the other day talking about uh, any kind of new federal programs regarding infrastructure will have to be made um, with uh, American materials, essentially. Um, obviously, again, with the CPI here, you know, this depresses um, bond prices because they want higher yields. All fixed income investments tend to lose value during this inflation. Um, so, you know, in the in the short term, I think we'll we'll see a little bit of issues, but um, we'll see if the, the Fed was right. Um, excuse me, we'll see if the uh, government was right in doing this. I spoke on this a little bit the other day when I was filling in for Tommy, um, but this Trafigora fraud uh, continued to really interest me. So if you're not familiar, uh, this is a Swiss commodity trader. I think they're based out of Singapore, um, but they're facing a $577 million loss through systemic fraud regarding uh, the nickel trading. Um, this nickel is widely used for batteries, and Trafigora has established themselves as a, a pretty big trader of this uh, metal in the recent years, of really all commodities, but especially uh, going into the, the, the battery sector. Um, and they have just dominated with billions in revenue over the past few years. Um, so they found out that the shipments that they were purchasing did not contain nickel at all. Um, the reason this is interesting and what got me thinking about this is I was reading some other frauds as well and big examples of people uh, laxing on due diligence. And it's impressive too when you consider that this due diligence um, should have been completed and the fact that it wasn't resulted in hundreds of millions of dollars of lost uh, capital. Guys, we will be right back. Stay tuned.